All right. It is. All right. So dark. All right. All right. Here we go. Your ring light, bro. I know. Episode number 74. No, three. Three or four. To start the fake podcast, we have an honest and necessary conversation. Conversations that you might not be having at your local Sunday morning service. I want to host Tech along with Ray Green and Jay Blunt. What up, fellas? Good job, Fred. <laughs> I remember that. What's up? What's up? Just good things. How you guys week going? Past the green. Well, everything has been okay. Uh, had a little incident with my. Uh, my my van yesterday, my my wife's van. Uh, the the um, the window broke. <laughs> it just it so it it just slid down into the door and just didn't come back up. Mm. During that rain that we had Monday. Oh, during the storm. Oh yeah, that was the and I was helping somebody uh, move. So uh, oh, that was yeah, that was like not not fun at all. I would not want to help my move on a spring day. <laughs> Much less not, my brother, I had to, I had to be there. He used to do the same thing. But uh, the crazy thing is when I try to get it fixed, the guy he he did it wrong. I didn't catch him. He took off my whole front windshield. Oh snap. <laughs> what? You I, didn't even so, want the front windshield fixed, did you? I did so I told he, the, I talked to the guy to come and do it, and I said, "Look, my driver's side window is it needs to be fixed." He told the worker uh, that that came out that next day that it was my windshield. So <laughs> got it. he's like, "Got when, it." When the front windshield. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, so I didn't, ca- I, I, I didn't catch him until later because I was inside while he was doing the work, thinking like, "All right, he got it. I ain't gonna stand out there." Um, next thing you know, I saw him carrying my windshield back to his car. I was like, "Where you going, man? <laughs> Where you was going? it broken? It, it oh. was a little small crack oh. in it, but oh. I didn't care about that. I wanted that whole the whole part that was missing. <laughs> you should have let him did it, and then came out afterwards. No, he did do it. Oh wow, I, I, he he did do it. I had to make a. I was I was upset. So long you didn't story have to pay short, for it, did you? I I paid for it, and this is the what? reason why. Okay. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I had the because it ended up my 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 car window uh-huh. ended up not being the actual window. It ended up being the regulator that's in, which is like the motor that controls it. So right. they wouldn't have been able to fix it anyway. So I told them, give me a deal on that, and then that way, basically, I got a two for one. So basically, all I had to do was pay. I paid for. Um, I'm paying for them to do the regular. They're going to put that in for free. They're going to put the regulator in for free. And they did the window. They fixed the window. So I, I paid for them fixing the window and them uh, and their part for the regulator. But they're doing the labor for free. Mm. It's so. time for the regulator. Hey, man. <laughs> the regulator. That's my week. They probably, they probably do that week. to everybody. They probably be like, man, this will never work. And then they be like, no, one day it's going to work. <laughs> One day it's gonna work. One day it's gonna work. Gonna work talk about this. We got. I, I gave the nice version. We talk about it off, off camera. Okay. I can't say that one. Okay. One day. All right. Uh, pass the blood. How's your week go, sir? Good. Let me uh first shout out you, your wife, your marriage. Amen. Tomorrow, bro. Ten Tomorrow. years. Hey, congratulations. Oh my gosh. A decade. Shout out to the Humphreys for celebrating ten years of. Of beautiful matrimony. Come on now. And then uh what a ten shout years, out. bro. It's been it's gone by so quickly to me. It has. And then I'm gonna shout out myself, my Amen. wife. Amen. Amen. Hey. Celebrate Friends. ten years. Ten years, both of y'all. Ten Dog. years. You know, it's ten years, so that's it's, it's been a beautiful journey. It's been easy, super easy. It ain't been easy. Woo. Look, it's been WWE it's been easy for me, but life is life. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Life, life is life, but marriage, marriage is easy. Mm. Marriage is—that's like that. my testimony. Hey man, my mm. testimony. Don't get yourself hey in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's been easy. <laughs> You're welcome. Crazy. Hey man. 
<laughs> okay. Challenges come, but overall, it hasn't been it hasn't been bad. That's my opinion. That's, I mean, that's that's my testimony. Amen. Um, amen. <laughs> those amens are getting louder and louder. <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so that business is picking up. Um, that's good. That's that's been a blessing. Uh, making a lot of connections and making um, yeah, doing a lot of work, putting a lot of stuff in. So that's good. But I got a car story too that just happened before we got on. Oh man! Is, mm, wow! Don't yeah, say the so, Mustang. No. Don't say the Tahoe. The Tahoe. Oh, so I was driving down the street and it just started crying. I was like, what is going on? Like it was like water or something was coming up from under the hood. Then I saw uh, like steam. I was like, uh, let me pull over. I was coming back with dinner and I uh, pulled over and I got out the car. I just saw antifreeze pouring out. The- oh, my gosh. I was like, what in the world? Luckily, I was like a quarter mile away from my mechanic. So. I just dropped it off there. I was like, I'll call him in the morning. Oh, but so you don't know the verdict yet? I don't know, but the anniversary weekend is this weekend. So, oh. You see what I'm saying? So mm. I got, you want to, we got to make plans and want to do mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we got this, I'm praying it's just something loose, something yeah. bad, you know, inexpensive. So it doesn't affect anything that we have going on. But um, oh. yeah, so like I said, timing. But God is good. I'm glad I wasn't out and about somewhere far away. I was literally right down the street from my mechanic. And uh, my wife was able to pick me up. But, um, yeah. Amen. So, mostly good things, mostly great things. Amen. And, uh, you know, life is life. You got to take it. Take the bumps as they come. You know? mm. Amen. What about you, boss? Uh, just good things. God has been good. I'm a... Uh... Yeah, anniversary tomorrow. I have no no idea. At least me and my wife are on the same page. We both have no idea what we're gonna do. I mean, uh, Corona's out here. Like COVID stuff. Oh, COVID done. It, it done. It done. We looking for hotels out of town. <sighs> uh, those will be the days. We got the kids here. It's it's real in the street. So I don't know what we're gonna do. We we'll figure out. <laughs> the what we're <laughs> Go do the bar. Wear your, wear your mask. But. Uh, <laughs> God is good. Bless, bless, bless to be celebrating 10 years tomorrow. I am actually excited about that. Um, and that's it, man. God's, God has really been showing crazy favor, which has been causing me some anxiety, which is what we'll talk about later. Anxiety, not, not that, but uh, we're talking about anxiety today. Uh, you know, we're trying to take some time digging deeper into mental health you know uh it's just a lot going on a lot of people a lot of people are uh struggling with mental health in different ways just doing the uh this time so uh, i want to take some time to go deeper in it during this season um yeah but before that pastor green came through with a great hot take so hit us with a pastor green Oh, um, okay. And then Pastor okay. Jay, we got to figure out what today is. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Pastor um, Jay. I guess uh, so today, high take, uh, it's like who's your inner circle? Who's your three, who's the three people in the inner circle? The, uh, the little special part about it is that it's a, it got to be a biblical character, a biblical person, and you can't pick Jesus. So, Jesus, your, Jesus, so Jesus. who are the three people that's in your inner circle that you roll with? All right, so if you had to go. pick three people in the Bible to roll with, who would that be? And you can't I'll go second. I, I want to go first. I'll go second. I'll go last. Are we doing it right now? <laughs> doing it right now? <laughs> I didn't know we was picking positions. <laughs> I'm picking second. All Shotgun. Right. Back to <laughs> so, okay. right. first. so it's me. Okay. <laughs> That's the green. You know you thought about it already. If you had to pick a crew I, I to run with from the it. Bible, who would be your who would be your three people you run with? Number one would be I know my number one is David. David. Yeah, I'm rolling thinking. with David. You're gonna get in trouble with David. I don't know if you can <laughs> hang with David. Well, yeah, David I, was a wild boy. You can't pick Jesus because it's the easy mm, answer. Sorry. Mm, oh yeah, yeah, you can't pick Jesus. Uh but yeah, David. Uh, because I'm giving quick music. because the music and um, I don't know I just really like his authenticity um, mm-hmm. I don't know I just mm-hmm. think we will I think we will roll, roll cool together um, 
I think my next person would be uh, my next person would be Paul oh, because you taking mine <laughs> Paul because I think we would have uh, I don't know it would just be good dialogue I think we would have good dialogue um, and last but not least um, I was not expecting to come back to me what? What? <laughs> Somebody? What the heck? <laughs> I want to give a real answer. I don't want to throw out. All right, uh, all right. My last ooh, person ooh. probably would be a. Uh, I feel like I would just be throwing somebody out there. Uh, I'm gonna I'm try not to repeat you either. I'm gonna try not to pick it right. you picked. All right, let's do that. You can't pick the same people. You can't pick the same people. Oh, bad. Uh, so right. now I so, should have got last. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. I did. I would do this to be a jerk. I'm picking Peter. So, <laughs> so it can't be, David, it can't be Jesus, Frank. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, I'm I'm rolling with Peter only because I think uh, like Peter was about that life too. All so, right, so Frank, yeah, uh, tell it, tell till it came down. Oh yeah, you know, till <laughs> well, it, I, Peter was that's like, true. Oh, oh. that's true. Yeah, he not who he, he was good till he got caught. <laughs> So you got Peter, Peter Paul, Paul, and David. Paul, David. And David. All right, Pastor Jay, if you had to pick your squad. My squad. See my crew. What you going to see my I'm, crew with? I'm going with <laughs> I'm going with my man, Mo. Okay. Good old Mo. Okay. okay. Moses. <laughs> Moses. We like, friends. We go by me, Mo. Mo. We first name basis, so I'm going by Moses. Uh, gotcha. Um, Moses, I'm going to go with um, Isaiah. Okay. And I'm going to go with, should I pick a New Testament guy? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with the greatest stepdad in the world. Wow. Joseph. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I just because you don't hear a lot about him. I know you don't hear a lot about Joseph, him. Not Joseph the dreamer, Joseph Jesus. <laughs> not, I'm right. going with the, the yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Now, why Isaiah and why Moses? Uh, Moses got all the stories, he got the first five books on his own. You know, he got a lot to say. Oh, he got that. Um, come on, Isaiah the prophet. I ain't got. I just being around him, no surprises. Just going to be like, <laughs> let's go. I just feel, you know, you got to get a crew you can feel comfortable with. And I need somebody, mm. at least one person like me, regular Joseph. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who I can have a conversation with. Oh my God. We okay. both got stepchildren, so we can uh, get something. Uh, compare notes. Exactly. <laughs> Like, did you spank him though? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I, I got, I, got uh, was I was scared funny. that y'all was going to pick this one. Solomon is going to be first up. There Wise you go. Wow. Ever. Right. There you uh, go. He, he keep me out of a lot of trouble. Nah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know. I you mean, want him for the money. Yeah. <laughs> gold digger. <laughs> gold digger. That's Solomon. my friend. Don't go to uh, Solomon for women advice, though, Tech. Don't uh, do uh, that. What? Well, no. Yeah, he's, he's that's exactly <laughs> yeah. in trouble. Uh, Sol- <laughs> Solomon. Uh I would pick Jude. Jude. Jude, because wow. he was a little rude. I need somebody hey, with my Jude. energy. Okay. Two of y'all together? Come on. See, that's the problem right there. That's <laughs> why Solomon wouldn't even make a difference. He would. <laughs> you to but you're not going to listen. We would listen. You, you're, not, you're not listening. You're like, yeah, we're going to be rowdy. Bless <laughs> like to this demand, would, though. Would bring us back to earth. You'd be like, man, what's the point? I'd be like, exactly. <laughs> uh, you listen. And then my last Solomon, Jude, and because Jude only got a half a book, Solomon he mm-hmm. has some issues, so I gotta get somebody who save, save, round them mm. off, Enoch, off the crew. 
Oh, he not he gonna Cuba. Cuba safe. No, no, he, he not, not for how long? Like, <laughs> for how long? I'll be like, listen, y'all gonna guys. be like, man, y'all gonna talk <laughs> bad about him as soon as y'all can't find him no more. Like, yo, where yeah. he go? Where he dog rolled yeah. to? He like, like, he ain't say nothing to nobody. He just rolled up. You gonna be upset? Like, you not gonna be like, guys, let's pray. I'm like, you right, you not? Let's pray. You right? We just go pray somewhere. Right. So those those would be my three. Let's look. Enoch, right. uh, yeah, well, he wrote a book to Enoch. I ain't read it yet. I got I got two copies over here. They done poisoned me and told me I shouldn't. <laughs> I got two uh, copies. I started reading. It's been you say? Good. Yeah, I got two copies. It's really not. All right. No, that's a whole other topic. It's really. No, I just didn't know. I, I, I mean, it's I, not that. I never heard of. I never heard bad. some. Somebody who actually had a copy. Yeah, I got two copies. Oh, okay. Well, I shouldn't say another bang really. Um we do we talk about the apocrypha? The what? The apocrypha. Not really. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy. That I, I always thought that the apocrypha was like this ultra blasphemous fake book. That's Listen. the 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 uh, the what is it called? That's what they give it, you know, how they talk about it. Yeah, like it's like, but it's really just the books they left out. The books they didn't think talked about Jesus. No. It's wild. Uh, but that, I guess that'll be another episode. Um, and I, I think the book, but the book of Enoch is in there, right? It's in the Apocrypha? Uh, I'm not I'm sure. Not sure. Or was it I'm something? Not sure. I don't know. I got to look it up for it. Endorsed the book of Enoch. Yeah, <laughs> it probably wasn't even written by Enoch. <laughs> <laughs> it was written by Enoch <laughs> on 24th Street. All right, um, cool. All right, so I, I guess that's it. We got the picks. Uh, let's look at the comments. See who got the picks. Uh, hey, Pastor Frank. Nah, Solomon. Hello, Elijah, Elisha, mm, and okay. Saint John. Saint John. Jesus. Oh, okay. Those, those are up, solid first. I would I would have picked John. Yeah. I was thinking about Elijah. Man, I forgot John the Baptist. Oh, Ooh, John the Baptist. But I feel like I can't live like you, John the Baptist. I feel like he would he would make me feel bad <laughs> for having clothes. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I'm going to Chick Fil A. Yeah, you, that's the locusts. one you don't want. Yeah, <laughs> Chick Fil A. He got that spicy locust <laughs> sandwich. Spicy. Hey, <laughs> 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 let me get a spicy locust. <laughs> well, I can't do that today, bro. All right, um, all right. So, th- so that was good, Pastor J. Yes, sir. All right, what so is good. today? So, if I'm correct, is the tenth? Yes. E- yes, the tenth. Monday, wow. the tenth. Oh my 10th. gosh! So, <sighs> favorite garment for yourself? Tech. Today is National Shapewear Day. <laughs> <laughs> it is also hey, National man. Lazy Day. Hey, this is my week. Uh, I'll be my all day. Together. All right, and then, and then, last but not least, it is National S'mores Day. How nah, you feel I'm about a, s'mores? I'm not a big s'mores man. What is it, the chocolate or the marshmallow? It's all the stress on the graham cracker. Graham cracker. Really? Graham Y'all don't graham. like graham cracker or marshmallow? Nah. Man, what the heck? Man, s'mores yeah. are pretty good, man. They're pretty good. I can not something I can eat often, but you know, when you get a good one, you, you only need really one. It's, it's so rich. Yeah. Uh, campfire marshmallows with the family. Mm-hmm. That's a good time. I never I had a s'more on the authentic cap- campfire, though. You got to do it. it. We yeah, marshmallows are disgusting. Uh, <laughs> all right, cool. Well, uh, moving on, getting right to it. Like I said earlier, uh, we've been talking about mental health. We kind of talking about mental health in the church in general. Uh, last <clears throat> week, wanted to dig a little bit deeper and talking about anxiety uh, in particular and dig more into these topics later. We probably will do a deep dive uh, into some of this. So, but that, with that being said, I mean, there's a there's a, a bunch of different ways that we can go, and I do kind of want to speak to anxiety in different ways. So there's, like, clinical anxiety, like general anxiety disorder. There is uh, and being anxious for a moment, being anxious about something. And um, 
Yeah, and, and I guess all the spectrum in between there. So I guess to start, for you guys, what do you find yourself most anxious about and why? Um, I'll start off. For me, it's usually related around finances. And um, it, with that being said, it's, it's typically not – just on my own. So when you're married, obviously your, your, your spouse's problems become your problems. And Mm -hmm. like you guys can be on different levels regarding the issue where I might just be on some, God will work it out as I try to figure it out. And then there might be, um, your spouse might be on some really high stress, like this needs to be solved now, right now, right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there are two different wavelengths that can happen. And typically with me, my anxiousness or my my level of, you know, anxiety will usually be, what's the word I'm looking for? Not determined, but affected by where my wife is. Mm-hmm. You know, like... She might be at 10, I might be at 3. But mm-hmm. because she's at 10, I might have to respond at 7 to bring her down a little bit. You know? <laughs> so there's, there, it's, it's a, a crazy dance, but typically it's, it's around um, finances in my, for, for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mine's, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, mine would be the mine would be the same um, around finances and um, making sure that uh, everything <clears throat> will be taken care of um, um, as far as bills and um, you know stuff like that. So I, I, mine is definitely actually I'm like it's it's like I think it's. It's like intellectually, I know that God is my provider. Um, and it's all, I'm kind of coming to this realization, it's all a, um, it's, it's all a illusion to a certain uh, extent because, you know, you think that you have things in control when, you know, definitely during coronavirus season, this, this time you realize the things that you thought you was in control of, you really wasn't in control of. Um, and it just really make me, uh, before all, you know, everything happened, God was in control. Even now God is still in control. Um, it's just about how I view, it makes me change my perspective on how I view money and how I view my job, how I view, um, what I do with my time. It's just like, you know, it's changing my, changing my perspective. So, um, yeah, mine is really like 99% is around, uh, finances and money. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, um, I think my, me, my anxiousness is around, um, death. Uh, but I'm trying to think, is it just as simple as death? Um, I think so. Death, dying, and yeah, I guess, yeah, or just anxious about tragedy or just something going wrong. Like, God has been really faithful, and a lot of um, good things have been happening. But part of that, those good things happening, I started to get anxious because it's like, you know what the freak is happening right now. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, you know, I, I never thought of myself as one of those always waiting for the other shoe to drop type of people. But I guess that is a sense of, of what I'm doing. Just like God is good. Things are good. But uh, being I'm being anxious about something going wrong. Uh, um, I was looking at the definition of anxious and it, and it says experiencing worry or unease or nervousness, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. 
Mm-hmm. Again, that's experiencing worry, unease, or nervousness, typically about an imminent event or something with an un- uncertain outcome. Wow. And um, yeah, I think uh, I, I think we said it before in the podcast, but I remember I was talking to my therapist or another therapist, and when somebody said this to me, I thought it was deep, and it was like depression has a lot to do with not being able to control the past and not being able to uh, accept the past. And anxiety comes from not being able to control the future. So like in depression, you may be too in the past and anxiety, you're too in the future, worrying about something that has not happened yet. And so that looks that looks different for different people. Um, you know, I think sometimes as Christians, we, you know, we read the scripture, um, you know, be anxious for nothing. And it's like, okay, you know, it said this before, like, okay, like it's easier said than done, but it's like, how do you walk through that process of trying to overcome anxiousness? I guess as Christians, why aren't we more, confident about the future do you think i think that um i think i've said this before and i think that part of it is our fault for not getting into the word ourselves, and then part of it i blame on pastors and preachers Hmm. because for the most part we're only taught a positive gospel we're only taught um, blessings and promises, you know, yeah and amen. We're only taught the good side of right. life and we're not like, like, it's like, let's think of it, something like, um, what's it called? When you go to military, you do basic training. Everybody goes through basic training, whether right, yeah. you're a chef, whether you just fueling, up ships or fueling boats or whatever you're doing or whether you're a mechanic everyone learns how to fire a gun how to crawl how to jump how to do fighting techniques you might never need it but you go through this level of training in case you run into these circumstances or obstacles Mm. now i think that i mean a good day i'm sure in the military is if nothing happens you know what I mean? If you don't have to shoot at anyone and no one shoots at you and you have, you know, that's a great day, I suppose. But um, I just saw myself on the screen. It's huge. Sorry. <laughs> but um, like we we don't go through this basic training where we're ready for anything. Mm-hmm. I feel like as a whole, we're, we're only we're we're really prepared for the good days. Our expectation level is only for good days and Christianity is framed within this uh, picture of roses, rainbows, clear skies all the time so that when life happens, we're not really prepared for it. And it's this, woe is me, where is God? Oh my gosh, who are you? You aren't you the God who promised me X Y Z? Aren't you? You know, it's this big to do about not having a, every day be a great day, mm. when like we don't suffer half as bad as those who we've read about in the Bible. Like it's too far away from us. It's mm. not something that we like we see for ourselves. They're all stories. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's my my take. Do you? Mm-hmm. That's agreeing. What do you think? What's the repeat the question one more time? Thank you, Fred, because I didn't even know how to end that. No, no, I, <laughs> no. The question is, why as Christians do you think we are? If if anxiety comes from an uncertainty about the future, why as Christians are we so uncertain about the future? Um. That second time you phrased it was a little bit, but I, I I have an idea. I think, um, I think a big part of it is that you know I think of as as a human, as a human, not even like a Christian, but as 
a human, like you don't kind of like what Jason was saying, like you don't you don't necessarily want anything bad to happen. Like you don't like you don't necessarily um plan for anything negative to happen or desire for anything negative to happen. Um so I think a big part and I just got lost in the train of thought, to be honest. <laughs> I got lost in the train of thought. Um but yeah, I think I think a big part of um that fear of repeat the question one more time. Let me just start over. <laughs> <laughs> repeat the question one more time. I got lost. I had an answer before Jason did. I got lost. Go ahead. No, why why do you think that we are so concerned about the future? You would think as Christians we'd be uber confident about uber uber confident, confident. about the future. Uh, but uh-huh. I, I mean, we struggle just as much as anyone else with uncertainty uh-huh. about the future. Uh-huh. So why are we more confident as Christians? Oh, why are we? Why are we not? Yeah. Why, why we are should we be? not? Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Um. Wait, yeah. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> come back to me. Come back. To we me. could come back. Come uh, I know. Back. I, I, w- I was thinking about this too, and and part of this came from, well, it came from like therapy. A lot of it, I didn't realize I was such a control freak Uh and that you can't control the future. And I know for me, I'll just speak for me. That's where my uncertainty comes because a lot of times my control is an effort to keep everyone safe. Definitely just coming from the perspective as a man and as a father, it's like, I want to be able to be like, I I got this. We're all good. And so Uh When I when I don't feel that con- and and when I don't feel that confidence and maybe it comes from a, a false confidence in myself that it's like you get used to feeling like you got it and then you realize you don't got it and you've been going on cruise control so much with confidence in yourself that when you come to the realization wait a minute I don't got it. You you know you freak out, and so I think for me, it it's a um, fear of the realization that I don't have control. I feel like that realization that I don't have control over anything has hit me like all at once, and I'm just experiencing the sensation of realizing anything could happen. Yeah, uh-huh. Definitely. I think uh I think one control I think control is an illusion. Mm. I think I it think is. control to a, a degree is an illusion and I think the uh-huh. best example of that is what what we're experiencing right now. Um uh-huh. with being in lockdown, quote unquote quarantine and the whole covid thing where we went uh-huh. one day from having all the amenities of 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 America to our uh-huh. our you know at our fingertips. To then having nothing all at once. Wow. So for those who thought they were under control and had things under control, or were the boss and who was calling themselves whatever, you know, suddenly it went from "What am I going to do?" It went from "I can do what I want to do" to "What am I going to do?" Mm-hmm. And I think that um one one I believe that one way that God has he he wants us to have like this childlike faith in a sense where like our children they they don't know they they just trust they I believe God wants us to trust in him like children trust in us mm. uh-huh. like they literally don't worry they just they have a level of expectation they love you know what i mean they have a love for us they're happy when they see us when we come around they don't most most good kids don't ask for a whole bunch of stuff. You know, the minimum is okay. Um, and it's, it's almost like, it's crazy, but I just think if we just trusted God more and just said, really like less of me, more of you, I know it sounds cliche, but if we, I, I believe that we should like, just try to relinquish a lot of that. The more we give away, the more we'll, we'll the less we'll fear that we're losing by not letting it go. 
because we're trying to hold on and to grab everything Mm -hmm. once and keep, like you said, keep everything together. But if we can bring ourselves to the understanding that it's all yours, whatever you want to do with it, you can. Almost like uh, where Job, when he was losing, he lost his kids and his response was to worship, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Yeah, it's, it's just like, like God, it's all yours. Every mm-hmm. every aspect, every nuance of my life belongs to you. Even the parts that I thought I earned on my own or under my own power came under the power that you allowed me to have. Like you, you have it has to go back to him in some yeah. degree. And I think if we 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 have to remind ourselves that because ego, and social media, and everything mm-hmm. else reinforces the idea of self-made. Reinforces the idea yeah. of yeah. I have to do this, I have to do that. But we have to constantly mm-hmm. battle against the mindset, and I think even that is a part of what Paul talks about: is dying the flesh. We don't think about the mind. Typically, we just think about tendencies and urges in, of the mm-hmm. flesh, but we mm-hmm. forget about the the mind tearing that down as well, and dying yeah. to that as well. Um, so that's my two cents. I, I, I think that is, yeah. that is great. And, and I think the, the thing about the children is, uh, it is amazing because, you know, I think I was, I was reading this earlier in the week where Jesus was talking, he was saying that same thing about the, the children you need to be like children. If you come, uh, if you, if you come to God, um, but then I, I noticed something I haven't noticed before. You know Palm Sunday, where they lay down mm. the branches and they say Hosanna in the mm. highest. Mm. And the people saw Jesus, they had said Hosanna in the highest, not as like worshiping him as God, but worship him. That word Hosanna is almost like a like a like it almost means like good luck, like being be good to us, like bring bring goodness, like, you know, bring us good luck. And so the people saw Jesus as a prophet. But right after that, there's a scripture that sometimes we attribute it to adults, but it was actually attributed to kids. And it's right around there. So the people come, they lay the branches, they say, oh, that in the high, say like, you know, come bring good luck. Then after that, the children say, Hosanna to the son of God or something like that. And it was the children that said that. The other people just considered Jesus to be a prophet. But the children who were there, the scripture says, saw him as the son of God. And then he goes on to say, look, hasn't this been prophesied that your children will, will say these things? And so children have this, this view, this way of seeing life, of seeing God, that somehow we lose. You know, I was thinking this thought this week that life is only as good as your ability to experience it. So it's like you have some people, uh, or your life is only as good as your ability to enjoy it, I should say. So okay. I, I was looking at this thing about, um, what's the dude who, um, the chef who killed himself? Uh, popular uh, chef. Is it Bourdain? Is it yes? Is Bourdain. Bourdain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was listening. I, I think I said it to you guys too. I was listening to this dude talk about uh, Anthony Bourdain give him a call, and this dude struggles with like depression, and they they're su- successful in their field about as successful as they can be and and doing what they want to do. And Anthony Bourdain called him, and he was just like, "Yo, how do you deal with this unhappiness?" Like. And you would think that, you know, this dude has every, like people kill themselves because they, they out of disappointment that they can't get what Anthony Bourdain has. Oh. And then he meets the same fate having it. And right, so right, right, right. you get there. Uh, a lot of times in life, we chase this, chase this feeling. We feel like, man, oh. if I get here, then I'll be happy. And then you get there, you're not happy. And then there oh. is this emptiness. And yeah. I notice, like, with children, they just enjoy life. Yeah. Like, my mm-hmm. son is not thinking about the next move. You know what yeah. I mean? He's not thinking about, all right, how am I make sure we're good next week? How? It's like a balance that we lose as we go older, that we stop enjoying the moment and where we are, and we, we're so in the future that yeah, we're not yeah, I want to talk present. About uh-huh. 
that's to, that's a good point. Um, yeah. The question: Why why can't we do that? Is I guess the question. And while you were talking in about your children or children enjoying life, as it is, you mm-hmm. know what I mean. Uh, as adults, we we really like we. All right, all right, let's let's go back to finances because that's where we started. Mm-hmm. Yep. We we really spend more money than we have a lot of times, or we mm-hmm. reach for more than what's necessary. Mm-hmm. And um, I think like if we think about the things that we are usually concerned about, it's mm-hmm. where we live, what we're driving, certain clothes, certain foods. We often have food in the cabinets, but we don't make you do with what we have. You know, like there were people who thrive with way less than what we had who are content. Mm. Like I know there are people mm. in Africa who are singing songs and laughing and playing, who are literally eating cakes made of clay from the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like I know that's happening. And I know if we did that, they would be like, what's wrong with you? Mm. Like, why are you sad? Look how mm. much clay we can eat. <laughs> you know, I'm um, yeah. full. Right. You know, yeah. it's so wild. But I, I think that we, and I think we have to unlearn some things as adults so we can teach it to our children not right. to chase after materialistic uh wealth because it's like you just said it, it's meaningless right. if you don't have yeah. peace obviously anthony bourdain didn't have peace yeah. he had everything he could probably have he he traveled the world eating food meeting right. people yeah. like he had one of the best jobs i think one could have yeah. yet he found himself in a in a dark place Mm. and i I think like we we have to unlearn for ourselves so we can be examples for our children and i think one problem that a lot of the children are having now is seeing one parent do one thing and being told another thing yeah you know Mm. so we can't we can't really enjoy life as it not things not enjoy things but enjoy life because we've given ourselves obligations beyond our living means. Yeah. So yeah. that's where the struggle happens a lot of times, yeah. especially for those who um, come in. No, I'm sorry. Especially for those who uh, um, deal with finances or issues with finances. Yeah. Let me jump in here. I've been mm-hmm. quiet for a long time. <laughs> I, good. Go, go get it. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, yeah, so I think a big, because uh, I'm, I'm personally, as we talked about personally walking through this journey and God has me on this journey. And as you guys were talking, you know, I was just reflecting. Um, and back to like the, the things that you guys mentioned about the children. And I think the older I got, the more responsibilities I got, I forgot my... And it's not like a knowingly thing. It's just the way I move. Um, Like, I forgot, like, the tear or the, not the tear, but my my place when it comes to my relationship with God. It's just like, you know, the more responsibilities I have, the more, uh, quote, unquote, you know, I got got a wife, I got kids. Um, I'm an adult. I'm a man. I got to go take care of business. And Mm -hmm. that same mentality I take with God what and it's it's an unknowingly thing of course consciously I'm not going to God in prayer like God I got this you know but it's just the way it kind of shows up and when I get worried or um what I'm not praying for you know it kind of shows up in those areas to where you know I I forget like I am a child like you guys were talking about um how a child just you know, not thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. You just live in their day. I have uh, mm-hmm. young kids and they literally just like, they they don't, they don't really, they have an idea what's going on um, in the outside world, but they, they just live in their day. And then the next day they're, they, they have that same joy that they had the previous day. Um, and it's just like living in that moment. And that is one thing that I struggle with um, is the, to really have, uh, a heart of a child, um, knowing that God is my father. You know, part of the reason why children or my children or you guys' children able to go to sleep and wake up with joy because, like, there is no mommy and daddy got, like, mommy and daddy mm-hmm. take care of bills, mommy and daddy take care 
a food. Mommy, daddy going to take care of my, for me to get through this day, I know that it falls on my parents. And it's something that you just know as a child. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no responsibility. And I think older, when you have to take care of certain things yourself, um, I know for me, the process I'm going through, I forget, like, I am, st- yes, I'm, I have responsibilities, but I have taken that responsibility of God in my relationship with God yeah. without, yeah. without saying it. Like, yeah. okay, you know, but really, you know, God is my father and he says that and the scripture says that. And I know that, but it's just, it's just something. Um, and I think those are the dangerous things, things that you don't say but things that's like in the, I don't know what you call that in the subconscious, subconscious. or whatever. Yeah. It, it's just, it's just the way I move and I'm learning that God is my father and, mm-hmm. and he has, he has taken, he has been a good father. He is a good father. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes, um, well, a lot of times when I'm anxious, I find myself and God checks me. He like checks me like, Hey, you, you worried about this? Have I not, took care of you such and such i'm like man you did why do i keep forgetting <laughs> why do i why do i keep coming back to this place so it's just it's just i i, I like what you guys were saying i just want to i think going back to your original question tech um i think that's what it is for me personally it's just the older i got the more responsibilities i got i forgot that when it comes to god that is a he's my father and he 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 places that there's a certain level of responsibility that he puts on himself saying no your responsibility is to speak me your responsibility is that but as far as like i i know you i know you have need of these things i know i got you i'm gonna take care of you i'm a good father um so you know lots of times i forget that yeah that's dope fred let me let me jump in real quick to yeah. you just said God is my father, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And like, you know who your father is. Yep. You know who he is, right? Yep. But then I, I think we, just like your son, you know who he is, but do we know who he is like your son believes who you are? Mm. Does mm. that make sense? Like, like, I remember when my daughter was young, um like my daughter believe i can do anything Mm -hmm. like anything wow anything my daughter really believed that i can do anything and so much to the point like i used to do that little thumb trick where you pull your thumb off (laughs) oh my gosh how'd you do that so i used to do that (laughs) i used to do that trick with uh, my daughter right Uh so i (laughs) Just freak me out for a second. Yeah, like, yeah, it still works. I, it so, still works. You got that. Oh. It still works. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so she used she used to believe I could do anything. So yeah. um so much so that she would go to her daycare and she would tell the kids about stuff that I told her I can do. Oh my god. And that was Ooh. one of the things. She was like, she was like that you could pull your finger off, right? I was like, yeah. So I would do it and all the kids would come around me and I'll have to do this trick in front of the kids and I'll be like, oh my God, ah, he pulled it off his finger. And she would turn around so proud. She was like, I told you my dad can do it. And then she was like, dad, can you fly? I was like, of course I can fly, babe. I forgot about the kids at school. I came to pick her up and she said, dad, can you fly for them? I was like, <laughs> what is today? I was like, yo, today is Thursday. I was like, dang. <laughs> so, but, but, so there was literally nothing. Like if right. I said it, she believed it. Point right. blank, period. And not only that, she went out and told other people in her peer group. And, but she believed it with all her heart. Like, if I said I can do something, or if she asked that, like, she just believed to that degree. So that's what I'm asking. Mm. Like, do we know and believe God like our mm. children mm. believe us? Mm. And I believe mm. that when when we believe God to that degree and we trust God and we have faith like that, mm. yeah. like, he, I felt pressured to perform. Mm. To mm. keep my own word. 
Mm. to a preschooler mm. so the question is like does like are we putting not i'm sure he i know he, we know he could perform but do we even like like you said god i got this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm good yeah. like let me let me try to figure it out mm-hmm. but we don't even ask him anymore we don't even we don't brag about him no more we don't we don't do any we don't tell people about him no more Mm. You know, we don't remind mm. ourselves or others about what he has done or what he can do. So we don't even talk to him. Or maybe we heard too many no's. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. I didn't have money for field trips for my for my daughter sometimes. Mm-hmm. So she heard no so many times that she just stopped asking because she just mm-hmm. stopped believing. And that was mm-hmm. a sad day for me. Right, and I was right. like, mm-hmm. yo, I, I got to make sure she got money for the next field trip. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah go ahead, mm-hmm. Tech. That's a good question. It is. Uh, what's that? No, I thought. Uh, I don't know. Was that a rhetorical question, um, Jason? But I, I thought the question was: Do we, do we uh, believe, um, like, do we believe uh, God, like, God? Yeah. Yeah. Like our children um, believe. Like us. our children believe us, and I, yeah. I, I know I struggle. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can sit here and say I do, mm-hmm. but obviously my my anxiousness. Uh, proves yeah. otherwise, <laughs> you know, because and I think I try because because as you was talking, like a lot of times for me, like when I come a- across a situation, like I have like and the, take you guys inside my weird brain, I have like the the Christian the reality of God is my provider, God has everything, but then on this other side where I battle with is number one the the uh, the 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 unknown, I don't know. I have no idea. And I, and I can't own that. It, it, and that goes back to the control thing. I cannot own that unknown. It's such a factor. And yeah. because yeah. I don't own that thing I don't know, then for me that I struggle with, it opens up the doors of possibilities of that bad thing that could happen. But you've never um, known for it. Yeah, it's it's all an illusion. It's yeah. all, <laughs> it's, it's it's all it, it's just it's just like and then on top of that is like the things like my past, like things that has happened that was mm-hmm. negative in my life. That's another thing that battles and it works against what I know to be true. Um, so so it's it's yeah. I I mean that that is very that 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 is that is the battle. You know of all those like I place more trust and faith in those all those other outside Thanks, circumstances um and less in just the solid who god is and i think that you know and i'm gonna shut it down but it just makes me think about that scripture um where it talks about abraham and how it just said abraham believed god and was accounted to him um righteous uh, righteousness and it was just Sometimes we think about that so deep, but when you go back and read the story of Abraham, like God told Abraham to get up, I'm going to take you to a country. Um, and he just believed and left. Mm. <laughs> like there, there were so many, there were so many variables. Mm. Like he, he could have, he could have got that word from God and asked like I do, well, what about this? Or I got my family here. This is where I was raised. This is where my father's country like all those variables, like he could have played it out. But just because God told him, he got up, he picked up his family, and he sojourned in it, like the scripture says, in the country as as like a foreigner, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like he, he was like, he just literally just went, to, he just followed God. And I think that is, I think God gets pleasure and he's honored by that. It's just like, because I told you, believe me, because I told you. And that's a hard thing to do, but that's faith. So, um, yeah, I shut it down. No, I, I think that, that's good. I, it reminds me, uh, what makes you think, too, of a, another perspective. As far as like, we were actually uh, reading the scripture today in Bible study in Isaiah chapter 7. Um, it is Isaiah chapter 7, verse, starting at verse 8. I'm going to read the end of verse 8. It says, if you do not believe, then you will not endure. And so one thing about that, to me, too, is a principle that um, 
our endurance level is is attached to is attached is attached to our belief. So like uh if you think that something is wrong with your life or if you think that um you know things always work out for other people but it doesn't work out for you uh when there is this this long thing or this trial time that you have to endure, you're more likely to give in, you're more likely to fail. And so for me, I had to like ask myself, well, what is my core belief that I believe about God? Do I really believe that he's, that he is for me? Now as a Christian, my automatic Christian response is yes, I believe that God is for me. But in my daily actions, do I believe that God is for me? And Mm -hmm. if I believe that God is for me, Mm -hmm. then that should inform that no matter what happens to me, I can I I can endure because the 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 foundation of my belief is he is for me. Whether Mm -hmm. things happen the way that I, I want them to happen or whether things happen the way that I, I, I wish that they weren't. Either way, I can endure. I'll be good because he is for me. And then uh, this scripture right after it in 10, uh, Isaiah, uh, Yahweh uh, spoke to as as high as, as I don't know his name, and asked and said, saying, ask for a sign for yourself from Yahweh. Make it deep as Sheol or hell or high as the heavens below. But as 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 said, I will not ask, I will not test um Yahweh. I will not put Yahweh to the test. And he said, uh here, O house of David, is it too little for you to make uh to make men worry, but that you should make God weary too. And so God God says this dude, like whatever sign you want, if you want a big sign, a little sign, make it you know, he was trying to show to him, listen, he, he had made a promise to him. He said, what I said I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Whatever sign you need, whether it's big or small, uh, mm-hmm. don't matter. Say it, I'll do it. And then the dude was like, well, I, I'm not going to ask you for a sign. I think the reality for us, and I was thinking about this this week, is God could give us that sign, big or small, and we still would not believe. I think, like, one of the things that I need to work on is, we need to waste make waste of time giving it to us. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just a waste of time because he, he would do it and then we'd be like, eh, you know, was that you really got? But I think even in life, you have to make an agreement with yourself of what will make you happy and then honor that agreement when you get there. And what I mean by mean by this like Right now, I, and, and I was having this conversation with somebody who does, like, music full-time. We used to do music together, and now they're doing music full-time. But it doesn't feel like you thought it would felt. So you still are anxious, depressed, trying to, you know. I, 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 I love what I do. I do it. All, all I ever said that I wanted to do with my whole life was be able to work in ministry and take care of my family. I'm able to do that now. It doesn't feel like the way that I thought that it would feel. And so in the midst of even getting there, I'm anxious, I'm, I'm worried. But this is where I said that I always wanted to be. And so I think right. if, if we take, and it's just as like a, a practical thing. Like if we uh-huh. take and we say, okay, this is the things I'm worried about. If this happens, I think that I, I, I would be happy. I think when those things happen, you need to celebrate those moments and, and honor that and actually be happy and enjoy it. But we mm-hmm. get there, we get to where we say we wanted to be, and that's still not enough because we're scared that mm-hmm. we won't stay there. We're scared that something else will come on. I think we need to uh, no, agree we, with that. We say those things in a happy place. You say, say it again? We, never, we say it in a happy place. We never say it in a low place. Right, right. We, we, all, we make the confession when we're on the high. And we usually forget about it by the time we get to the low point. Yeah, or the, or the reverse. We say it at a low, and then mm-hmm. when you know the grass is always yeah, greener, exactly. we feel yeah, like exactly. that this will make us happier. We get uh-huh. there, and, and it's like what I'm trying to do, and I'm being hypocritical because it's something I really need to work on, is, yo, did you wake up this morning? Be happy. Like, right. like be, like, like, be, and, and this sounds very cliche. And it's harder said 
than done. But happiness is kind of a choice. It's a choice. It's a perspective that you choose to look at life. It's not easy to just click on happy button, mm. but it's like it, it, it is it's how you choose to look, look at your life. Like the Bible says, uh, I think a lot of people probably bring up the scripture when talking about anxiety. I mentioned it before. It says, you know, be anxious for nothing. We think that because the scripture says be anxious, okay. Scripture says be anxious. I am automatically not anxious because the Bible says don't be anxious. No, that's something we need to work at. That's something we need to work through to understand. Okay, how how do how do how do I be anxious for nothing? What is the, what does that look like? Um, mm-hmm. You know, God has set the mark. Uh, God walk with me in, in getting there. So I think one of the things that we need to do as believers is definitely people in general set an agreement with yourself and God. I mean, God is faithful. He does all these things, and we don't even, I don't think you can appreciate, I don't think appreciation and fear can exist at the same time. Mm. So I think so mm. much, God is mm. doing so much for us. He's mm. providing for us, but we're so afraid of things that have not come that wow. we're not even appreciating what is, you know, what, what, is, what is in front of us. Uh. Yeah, uh, Pastor Jay, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, no. I'm just reading as you're talking. I, I think you made a, a lot of good points there. Um, uh, yeah, I think appreciation is a better place to get yourself to versus mm-hmm. happiness. Right. It's a it's a step towards happiness. I mm-hmm. think it's easier to be appreciative than it is to necessarily be happy because a lot of us long for more in some instances or better. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, um, gratefulness and appreciation are good, good ways to kind of ground yourself emotionally and spiritually possibly to Uh when you do hit a low point or a high point, wherever you are that you, I mean, you could be happy and appreciative. You can be, um, you, you can be not so happy, but be appreciative. You know what I mean? So I think uh, grounding yourself in like starting off with appreciation or just thanking God for every, every place where you don't yeah. say, not look at appreciation through the lens of a, it could have been worse, even though that's yeah. typically the way we look mm-hmm. at being, oh, I could have been worse, but just saying, where, where am I? Like you said, I'm yeah. alive. Mm-hmm. I have breath yeah. in my body. I have this, I have that. Thank you for it. If we, I think, yeah. If we ground ourselves in that way, I think it could help bring us to a place where we can learn to be content and learn to be, I want to say satisfied. Satisfied is a hard word to use, but learn to be content or grateful so that, you know, wherever we are, and that's Mm -hmm. the, you know, I think sometimes we look at life where I was talking about early from an upward trajectory. Like, all right, well, this is my lowest point. So it can only get better from here. So, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. we, we hit these low points and it's like, well, well, this has to be the bottom because I feel the worst or the worst I've felt in a long time. But mm-hmm. there might be a couple more steps down here. Who knows? Uh, right, yeah. uh-huh. You know, yeah. but it's like wherever I am, right? I can, it, that's Paul, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm-hmm. Strengthen me to do what in this moment? Like, what are we praying for? Huh. And even if we are that, let's all right, ah, let's pray for strength, strength, yeah. strength to be okay with where I am. Right. Yeah. That, I think that's important, right there. I, I'm getting something as we were talking. Is that huh. like the fact that through Christ is a We don't think about being like it is we have to look for him or through him to do to do something simple like being content. Mm -hmm. Not something we can't even grasp on our own accord. I mean, we would we wouldn't have any suicides, right? There would be no suicides if we could just do it. There'd be no depression if we can just click it on and off. Mm -hmm. Like we, we actually need him to to pull us back or through those, those lower points. Just a thought. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think 
something that we don't acknowledge enough as Christians, that this is, it's not something that happens instantly. It's something like you said that you have to work through, through prayer, action, trial. And like, you know, it's, it's something that it's, yeah, it's something that takes work. It's not something that comes automatically just because it's something that you know that you should do. It's like you, uh, even going back to children, if you want to, you know, we raise our children and we teach them certain behaviors because we want to raise them in a certain way. So certain things that we have to begin to reteach ourselves that maybe we learned as children or we, we learn younger. One of the things that, again, to Jason's point that I'm trying to do is appreciate um, you know, appreciate more. Like every day I wake up, like, do I have a coronavirus, bro? I, like every day, I'm like, dude, just, I have a so it's like, why not just appreciate? <laughs> and I envy Jason. Just like, wild, bro. <laughs> I'm not saying good, but I mean, like, but that's what that's where I need to get to, bro. But this, I think knows? it's like, uh, I think it's like appreciating, um. I'm up. I'm alive. I'm here. My family's good. I don't. You know what I mean? And so it's like, again, I'm just thinking about it. You can't really um, worry. Worry robs, God. you know, if, I, if I'm going to get real gospel music, A flat. I ain't do it. <laughs> gospel Go music, A flat, churchy. I think Church key. worry robs uh-huh. God of praise because mm. you are, you're missing. Everything that he is, has done and is doing for you, worrying about something that will never happen or may never happen or something that you have no control over. It's like you are like, you know, God is like showing off. I mean, God has been really, really, really good to me, uh, granted me like crazy favor. Uh, you know, people are losing jobs. Debbie, not too long ago, got a raise doing Corona. Uh, Amen. So it's like, you know, I should be, God has been faithful. Um, but I, I'll be thinking about all the, all the things that could go wrong. And so that's, that's something that I'm trying to change. Uh, I, 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 do, I do have a question for you guys as far as the balance of this. I do have some time. I do struggle. And I don't know if this is fully on the anxiety thing. But I do sometimes struggle with appreciating what God is doing for me when others are like hurting. So like uh, the thing in Lebanon, it's just like yeah. frequent. Yeah. So I'm like, man, God that's is crazy, like, man. that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like God is being really, really good to me, but it's like simultaneously while I am blessed and, and God's been good to me at that same moment, miles away, people are right. facing the greatest tragedy yeah. they, they've ever known. Yeah. And it's like, and then that makes me, I can't say it makes me, but then I begin to, you know, feel not guilty. I don't know if the word is guilty. Maybe guilty. Well, that, that goes back to, to, to you believing that you have some type of power control over where you were born, placed, and have, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. You can't control that. Yeah. You are where you are. And yeah. people have always hurt. People have always lacked. The Bible says the poor will be with us always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's always yeah. going to happen. But if that's where your heart is, the question then becomes, in my opinion, what are you going to do about it? Right, right, true. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 No, I, you know, I, I kind of, I feel, I, I feel that, you know, um, I don't know if I feel um, necessarily. Uh, I don't know if I, I feel guilty necessarily about where where I am, but it makes me more. Um, it makes me more aware outside of my own circle. So when I see stuff like that, yeah, I'm blessed. But it was a reminder that I just don't. It's just not about me. This world is not about for it. Um, there are other people who are going through. Uh, things that um, that is not, you know, they're suffering. Um, and it just makes me, for me, it just puts that sober reminder that as I am thankful for what I have, I can't be forgetful for 
the next person who may not have. Because um, I think sometimes we can get so wrapped up in being thankful for ourselves, like you said, that you just go about your day. Um, but you don't want to go to the other extreme, and and you know you don't want you don't despise what you have because God has uh, blessed you with that. But I think the the healthy reminder is just like you know to be to be what you to, you know pray you know pray for people or be 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 the hands and feet of Jesus to those people um, in yeah. in how you feel. I um I while you were talking I. <laughs> had a thought that I believe that oftentimes, especially, are you stuck? No, I saw you breathe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what I saw move, but God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the uh, question, I think, or not the question, but I think the goal oftentimes what comes for especially Americans, this is my opinion, is that when we see lack and loss, homelessness, et cetera, a lot of our uh, life becomes about not helping per se, but about not becoming Mm -hmm. like them. The fear of Mm -hmm. becoming like what we see Mm -hmm. versus, versus seeing it as something that we have an obligation Mm -hmm. to Right. Just I get that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I agree. I, I I think one thing that has been helping me and one thing I've been kind of leaning into is I just call it the Joseph theory. And that is in life you have ups and downs. Like Joseph said, uh, you know, when he had a dream, you have seven years of of uh, fruit and you have seven years of trash. Like mm-hmm. in life, I don't think you can't uh you can't view how life is happening as something that is particular to you, if that makes sense. So it's like right now we may be in a season uh, where our things are, your things are going good. God is, you know, things are going good in the way that we would define good. And so instead of appreciating that, appreciate that, we can spend that, I can spend that time worrying about things going wrong but there will be a time where it seems like everything's going wrong. There will be a time of tragedy. There will be close loved ones that I love to me that will pass away. I mean, this, this will happen. So I think, again, if you spend your time of, of, for lack of a better word, you spend your time of fruitfulness, worrying about the famine, then, you know, you'll, you'll miss it. You, you'll miss out. Like, this is your time to enjoy it. There will be a, I, w- I was telling, I was talking this with Debbie, and again, this is another gospel cliche that has been overused, but you know, they had this big storm uh, a couple of days ago, yeah. and storms always are, you know, it's a overused Christian metaphor, but storms are a good reminder to me because no matter how bad th- that storm is, it could be the worst storm. It could blow out the power. It could like be a tornado. Don't say that. The, the next day, the sun will shine again. It's like no matter how bad the storm mm. is, there's all there's <laughs> always going to be a sunny day the next day. Yes. And then Ooh, guess what? Hey. Another storm will come. Hey, guess yep. what, bro? I got another one for you. Hit it. Mm. Here's something even. It's not even better. But here's something else. <laughs> the sun is always shining. It's never not shining. Come on, mm-hmm. brother. There it I, is. I, I went I went to Alabama. I flew to Alabama. Right? Mm-hmm. We were flying above a storm that I didn't even know existed. The mm-hmm. sky was beautiful, blue. It was it was there. Yeah. As we descended, so did my, my perspective changed. Mm-hmm. It was dark, it was gloomy, and it was raining. Uh So when I landed on the ground, I couldn't see the sun, but it was out. It It was was there. It was always there. Yeah. The only thing that changed is where I was. Come on Mm. now. Mm. Yeah, and and you know it it, when that would that would be like, I think that's a good point. It 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 is always there, and it is a is a big 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 matter of. Uh, perspective. perspective. Yeah. Life is 
yeah. Life is only as good as your ability to enjoy it. Well, and it's hard. Person. That perspective that we're talking about is hard to get that perspective without spending time with God. Um, because yeah. it's it's it's. I think sometimes you know it's when you're trying to gain that perspective in your own mind and in your own strength. Um, a lot of times it really does take getting a getting with God, and a lot of times God would take you. Um, um, and, and give you that perspective. He'll he'll check you. He'll say, you know, like he'll the scriptures um, through just directly communicating with you. Um, he helps you gain that perspective that you could take and run and walk it out with. So um, I think a lot of times we 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 try to you know we try to gain or we try to manage without investing time in Jesus, who right. is peace, who is these things. And I, I know for me, a lot of times um, when I actually, um, I'm wearing, and then I say, all right, let me, sometimes God may wake me up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, man, it's why am I? always three. Yeah. <laughs> and What's I up with that? Up, oh, I don't man. know. It's, it's weird. Like, you gotta yeah. talk to him about that. <laughs> and I, and I, I learned to just go ahead and talk to him as opposed to going back to sleep. And usually in those moments, he's just telling me, like, like he's giving me a different perspective. Like those right. times where, a lot of times where I'm, like I mentioned earlier, like my past where I felt like it was the worst thing, he'll mm-hmm. take me back to those moments and say, was you, do you remember this? Remember when I was there? Remember? And it gives me a different perspective. Like, dad, you, you right, God. And then remember how that situation actually benefited you in the long run on this and it's like it's just like this whole mm. perspective and it gives right, me yeah. peace it gives me yeah. peace and i think that is the that is the power of having a relationship with the eternal god who who's not is, that's outside of time um to where he could you know he like he holds the future he holds the future and he got us and when you could go to someone who holds the future knows the future and could like he's the best one that could kind of console you about that future uh, because he has it. He owns it. It's in his power. And then on top of that, he, he loves us. He's a good father. So I think in order to gain that perspective, we cannot um, do it with the absence of God. We right, have right. to pursue him. Yeah. And yeah. And, uh, and the last thing I want to say, because I think this is a, a great, conversation i think sometimes as believers we don't have conversations like these because we just quote the nearest christian cliche that we can think of it's like okay trust god well okay what what we have to be able to do is have discussions break down and and, and work out what does trusting god look like like it, it's easy for, okay, I got some advice for you. You just need to trust God. I got some advice for you. Don't fear. I got some advice for you. Don't be anxious. Like, that's not, that's a very broad scope. Mm-hmm. We need to, as Christians to get better at breaking down and working out what these things look like in our lives. We all agree that mm-hmm. we need to trust God. But what we need mm-hmm. to get better at is understanding what trusting God means what what that yeah. looks like and so uh that's uh, that's why i appreciate you guys i appreciate everybody in the comment section matter of fact we can go to the comment section yeah, uh respond to comments see if we're missing anything uh i'll start with one all right go ahead Pastor Jay. brother mark uh, mark one wolf said here is one philosophy there is no such thing as uh change no such thing as darkness only in absence of light amen i like or that. covering of light going to you back to your point you're saying that the sun is all mm-hmm. is always shining mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. always it's just sometimes mm-hmm. you know something could be blocking our, our vision yeah. it reminds yeah. me of like there's alaska there's like a, a mm-hmm. point in season in alaska where there's darkness for months and then there's the same thing where there's light for months mm-hmm. like you wake up at three in the morning since that's the, right. the time and mm-hmm. it'll be sun outside and then mm-hmm. it'll be night but because of where it's positioned it, it still sees the sun but yeah i like that yeah. absence or darkness covered or absence of light that's dope 
Cool, cool. Any other comments? I'm sorry. No, you're good. They keep moving. Um, yeah, brother Mark, again, he said, we have to understand that we have authority over all these negative things and we need to use that. Amen. I think that's a good point. I think that goes back to, to we need to be able to break down, like, what does that look like to use that authority? What does that look like to walk in that authority? What does that look like? Uh, as believers, I think we, we need to get better just as the church in general at like being able to break that down, what that looks like in a believer's life. You know, what does it mean? Mm. In that authority? Mm. Aunt Rita, I'm going to call her Aunt Rita. That's, that's your aunt, right? That's my right. aunt. Hey. Aunt Rita said aunt to Rita. calm anxiousness in her opinion is to be truth to true to yourself. When we hit bumps, turn to the most high for guidance and pray that he will put the right people in our path to help us in our journey. Amen. If only for that season. Amen. Yeah. And uh, my uncle, I got my uncle on here. Hey. This can be applied to uncle. light in your heart. Yep. Good point. My uncle posted, shout out to my uncle, uh, Uncle Lewis. We call him Uncle Pee Wee. He posted a bunch of scriptures from Psalms and Proverbs. We can't hit them all, but we're going to... Uh, copy them and check those out so make sure y'all check those out in the comments thank you uncle yeah. Peavy, for doing that yeah um derek jackson he, he put people derek. depend on world the worldly system instead of god's heavenly system this guy's the deepest dude on hey man Facebook derek jackson sure. man <laughs> derek, derek jackson is guy. yeah i think that's pretty good for now all right or as far as comments goes Praise the Lord. Uh, appreciate everybody that is there in the comment section. Hold this down. Real quick, because we got a couple. Can, is that okay with you? Yeah, do you think, bro? All right, let's shout out. It's our thing. <laughs> Brother Mark Wolf. <laughs> Brother Mark Wolf, thank you for joining us. All Uncle right. Pee Wee. Lewis, thank you. Katrina, thank you. Yeah. Frank Pointer, right. thank you. Uh... Derek Jackson, shout out to him. He just put out a, a rap video. I think it said seven sixty two challenge. It was pretty. Hey, good. hey shout out to that. Derek Jackson. Sup. He's pretty pretty dope. Shout out to Aunt Rita. Uh, uh, who too. else came through? I think that's it. Lion, shout out to Lion. Lion, uh, Lion. He's a dope uh, artist oh, as well. Man, that's incredible. Lions a beast, Amazing. right? The, Yes. I think that's it for now, but comments was fire. Thank you guys for participating and joining the conversation. Once again, y'all y'all are amazing. Hey man, Disrupt the Faith Podcast. If you listen to this in Podcast World on Monday when we release this, make sure that you subscribe. Subscribe, leave us with a review. It does a big help in uh, people finding out about uh, the podcast. So Disrupt the Faith Podcast Apple, Spotify, wherever you find great podcasts like these. And also, shout out to the people in South Africa. We have some What's listeners, oh, some faithful yeah. listeners in, shout, in South Africa. Africa. We it's don't know South. who you are. Don't know how to get to you. But God bless you to all the, all the listeners across the world. We're global. All right. We're well, global, baby. Peace and blessings. <laughs> unless I'm, I'm missing anything. Love and appreciate you guys. And we are out. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. Let us know your thoughts below in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that bell. Make sure you do so. If you want more conversation like these, go ahead and hit the video. Hope you guys are blessed. Uh, see you next time. Also, if you want, you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, and wherever you catch fun and great podcasts like these. All right, you take care. Be blessed.